So, in this episode, I'm going to review Camp Pleasant Lake. Still, the question remains. Will this campy flick pleasantly surprise you? Where will the first kill be? Wouldn't you like to know? Welcome to my channel. Thank you for clicking on my video. Hello world! I'm Chris Maitini, aka Mr. Flickster! Mr. Flickster! Camp Pleasant Lake. It's the new horror comedy about a couple revitalizing an old campsite connecting them to a chilling past that reveals a 20-year-old mystery involving a missing boy and girl. Now, legend says that Echo Meadows was kidnapped by Echo's little brother. What happened to him? As bizarre events unfold, they must confront the forces linked to the heinous crime. So, do you think we will spoil a movie film? Yet. This is spoiler free review. Hey, that's my wine. I think not, PBQT. Ho ho ho. Written and directed by Thomas Walton, the comedic tone is quickly established with callbacks to 80 slashers and self aware humor. Where this mysterious event took place is now owned by the Rutherfords. It's been rebranded as Camp Terror, the horror experience. Adults pay good money to relive legendary horror events, and this week's theme, Camp of Terror. This couple is clearly trying to capitalize on the tragedy of Echo and Jasper, the missing boy and girl. Some of the people who were involved in the incident when it happened are visiting the camp, 
with their own agendas. It's a very interesting premise. Furthermore, it takes time to explain the legend through flashbacks set in 2002. Echo and Jasper Meadows get a fully developed backstory pulled in bits and pieces until it comes full circle toward the third act. Filmed in Santa Clarita, California, it's gorgeously shot to highlight the beauty of the Golden State with outstanding aerial establishing shots. The high production value makes it a wonderful film to look at. There's a good blend of humor and horror. There's a great running gag about how people can't tell the difference between real violence and what was supposed to be staged. It has great gore effects too, boasting creative kills. It's not the typical hack and slash stuff. There's actual thought put into this. I love the killer's mask too. It's an original design that sends chills down the spine when looking at it. Honestly, darling, I'm an indoor cot. When nature calls, I only have two reasons to answer. Number one, and number two. How marvelous. The cast includes Jonathan Lipnicki, Bonnie Aarons, Michael Paré, Robert Lozardo, Carrie Lynn Ryder, Mike Ferguson, and Maritza Brickesack. The acting's over the top, but I think that's a creative choice because everybody's exuberant performance adds to the energy of the film. There's this collective energy that you can tell everybody's feeding off each other while they were filming. You can tell they were really excited to be there. And they had so much fun filming everything. That being said, certain characters inexplicably make nonsensical decisions. For example, no one questions the real murders happening before them, or anything being too realistic at all even. They don't feel like real people, they're more like one-dimensional cartoon characters that are just there for the slaughter. But hey, that's all part of the fun. This movie's not really meant to be taken that seriously anyways. It sets that up right away. It immediately tells you that you're going to be in for some bloody good fun here. It's so much fun seeing Bonnie Aarons acting outside of the Nun movies. Like, yeah, she's great in those, but in this one she's actually talking, and she actually gets to show her acting off. Her performance is over the top, sure, but just like everybody else, she's having fun with it. She's having a good time. It's probably nice for her, too, because she's not in such a dark and dreary, dreadful movie. And trust me, The Nun 2 was dreadful. She's great. The movie, not so much. And Jonathan Lipnicki has a highlight performance here. And he has so much charisma. Oh no! Help! He probably has the most energy out of everybody. Who knew this was the kid from Jerry Maguire? I love the score, too. It's reminiscent of classic TV sitcoms, yet it works, because it adds to the camp factor. Overall, I was pleasantly surprised with this camp-tastic flick. It's a frolicking high-energy adventure with that schlock factor that made 80s horror so fantastic. Sure, it's predictable, but it's just so much fun. Ah, he's laughing, he's having a good time, good for you, yeah! It's more about the journey than the destination. It fully embraces the silliness of those classic 80s slashers. It tells a genuinely scary story when you think about it on a deeper level. It never takes itself too seriously, while touching on themes like being desensitized to violence, financial gain from pain, influencers, social media, and childhood trauma. I love how it takes place around Halloween, too. That makes it a Halloween movie. And it frequently features the holiday's iconography. I can totally see this being an annual Halloween watch. It's that enjoyable. It reminds me of I Know What You Did Last Summer, Friday the 13th, Hellfest, and Scream. I recommend this flick if you like those. Stick around for the end credit scene too, because it's totally worth the wait. So, my future grade for Camp Pleasant Lake?
It's large popcorn. So what did you think of Camp Pleasant Lake? Have you seen it yet? Leave comments below and we can talk about it. Until next time. I'll see you at the movies. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. It's crystal queer waxing for me. In fact, I hate getting wet so much, I even prefer dry humor. And remember, this flick will make you smile some more. Did you know that I'm a film critic for HorrorBuzz.com? You can read my reviews on their website. And I make frequent appearances on their YouTube channel, HorrorBuzz Live. So I'll leave links below for that too. You scared the shit out of those campus earlier. Literally. To death. To death.